This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, April the 17th, 2019. It's the birthday in 1620 of St. Marguerite Bourgeois, the foundress of the Congregation of Notre Dame de Montreal in Quebec, Canada. She was French-born, and she knew from a young age that she wanted to be a teaching sister, but she wasn't interested in the local convent. The sisters there were cloistered, and so only the rich girls could afford to live at the school. Marguerite very deliberately wanted to work with the poor, and so she got her education and made her way to Montreal, where she met the governor and got an invitation to start a school for girls. Now, she was very conscious not to accept the hospitality and gifts being offered by the wealthy colonists, so as to ingratiate herself with the poor. And because of that, her school was very slow to get started. But when it did, she had all the street cred and the genuine holiness that she needed to attract several young women who asked her to form a religious community. And the rest is history. St. Marguerite died in 1700 AD and was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II in 1982. Her feast day is January the 12th. Today in 1397, at the court of Richard II of England, Geoffrey Chaucer told slash sang the first section of his newest major work, which would be called the Canterbury Tales. It would eventually run over 17,000 lines in 24 distinct stories set in the context of a group of pilgrims making the pilgrimage to Canterbury. It was meant to be much longer and larger, and like many menstrual pieces, it was meant to provide a framework in which to tell stories. And just as many fairy tales begin with a long time ago in a kingdom far, far away, and end with they lived happily ever after. So the Canterbury Tales could begin with on the way to Canterbury, the cook told another tale. In many ways, it had the same sort of effect that movie franchises have nowadays. Someone can say, oh, well, this is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or this is a Wes Anderson film, and immediately there are specific expectations and allowances that the audience makes. And so if a bard would say, let me tell you another of the Wife of Bath's tales from the road to Canterbury, there were specific expectations of body humor and adult themes. And it was certainly much better than, let me tell you a dirty story. The Canterbury Tales was a gigantic project and was never completed. Chaucer died at the age of 57, having finished only 24 stories. And yet they remain beloved tales and a real window into the culture of that age. Today in 1907, the Ellis Island Immigration Center had its busiest day ever. In a single day, the center processed 11,747 people. On average, they would process 200,000 immigrants a year, or about 3,800 a week. It officially closed its doors in 1954, and now applicants for citizenship are accepted all over the nation. Finally today, in an heroic effort, astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swaggart, and Fred Hayes returned safely to Earth after their nightmare scenario in space aboard Apollo 13. The command module, Odyssey, took six minutes to pass through the atmosphere, which was 87 seconds longer than expected, and that expectation was set by some of the smartest mathematicians in the world who feel like they've done a bad job if they're off by a second and a half. So you can imagine the anxiety of waiting 87 seconds to hear from the spacecraft. They splashed down in the South Pacific, southeast of American Samoa, only about three miles from the USS Iwo Jima, who recovered the astronauts in less than 45 minutes. Shockingly, everyone was in good health, and that's a testament to the crew, to mission control, and to the equipment that a mission of such unbelievable complexity could be carried out using computers with less processing power than a 1980s-era calculator watch. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.